and we don't get a word from God because God will tell you some different things to do. And so you just do what you've been doing. And so what we do is we create a service and we say, God, here's our service. Now come do something with it. The Lord said, well, I had a whole service planned. <laughs> and that's where I do something. It's where I've got my service planned. Can you say amen? amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Apprehended people apprehend. You have to be apprehended before you can apprehend the things of God. You know, singing praise is, is wonderful. It's an opportunity. You can take that opportunity or not take it. Singing is good, but God wants us to do more than sing to Him. God wants us to respond to Him. Yes. So sometimes we offer up singing and coming to church as an option so that we don't really have to respond to him. We just go to church, follow the directions, and then we go home. But God said, I want you to respond to me. I want you to come to me. I want there to be engagement. Can you say amen? amen. You know, our church gatherings, you know who they belong to? You know who should own? You know who is the rightful owner of our assembling together? as the body of Christ, King Jesus. King Jesus owns this gathering. Don't you think that he ought to be able to have it his way? You've settled into listening mode. <laughs> what did I say? Respond. Responding. I want to help encourage you to learn how to be responsive it's good to be a listener. It's good to be a singer. But it's better to be responsive. Hallelujah. So our church gatherings belong to King Jesus. So our gathering together must not be about him. It must be to him. Do you see the difference? When it's about him, we just all fall, fall into our order. But when it's to him, we gather to him. And wherever the Lord is and people gather, stuff happen praise God Philippians chapter 3 is on my heart this morning and in verse 12 the Apostle Paul said this and I'm gonna paraphrase it for you he said I am following Jesus so that I can apprehend that purpose for which Jesus apprehended me how many of you are familiar with that verse you've heard that before yes, I am following Jesus so that I can apprehend the purpose for which Jesus apprehended me. That word apprehend is a wonderful word. And he said that God apprehended him, and so now he in turn, being apprehended by God, is wanting to apprehend the purpose for which God apprehended him in the first place. And that word apprehend means to take eagerly. Take eagerly. It means to seize, to possess. God seized you and I. God possessed you and I. God eagerly took hold of you and I. You know, you may not have seen it when you read through the gospel and saw Jesus on the cross, but it was a very passion. It's called passion for a reason. It was very passionate. It was Jesus passionately taking hold of you and I. And the first part of us he took hold of was our sin to pull it out and get it out of the way so that he could have us, so that he could fellowship with us, so that we could come and apprehend the purpose for which he was apprehending us. Listen, only apprehended people apprehend the things that God has for them. This is why many Christians believe in have a practice of going to church, and maybe even have a practice of a devotional life at home. But don't apprehend, don't lay hold of, don't eagerly take hold of, don't seize, don't possess the promises of God, the vast promises of Scripture. From his peace to his power over death, hell, and the grave, all these things he wants to give to you and I. And Many believers are not apprehending those things because they don't live an apprehended life. Our apprehending begins with our being apprehended. Are you listening? 
When we come as the body of Christ before the Lord, we come first to give ourselves to Him. Then we can receive the blessings, the purposes, and the assignments that He has for us. But many of us have been taught to come and get ready to receive, but that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches come to give. Come to give yourself to God. Because ap you, you must be apprehended before you can apprehend what God has. Terry, how often have we walked into church and walked out without the healing, without the deliverance, without the breakthrough, without the strength, without the peace, without the things we so desperately need and the things that God has for us because we walked in and walked out and we thought, what did we do? We, run, we, we just uh, we wrote it off as, oh well, the Lord didn't want to move today or oh, the pastor blocked the anointing or you know whatever it is the last thing we ever think of maybe I never let God apprehend me Amen. are you coming in so that God can apprehend you has he apprehended you yet this morning are you apprehended I'm not asking a theological question I'm asking a, a fellowship question has God apprehended you could you stand up right now and say I am in the hands of God God has his hand around me because I put myself in his hand. Or did you just cruise in and expect the service to bring you what you need? Do you understand what I'm saying to you this morning? Yes. See, we come together as the body of Christ first to give ourselves to him. Then we receive the blessings. You must, God must have you before you can have things. God wants you to have those things. He wants you to have blessing. But before you can have things, God must have you. Does he have you? Is that your goal? When you come in, God get a hold of me. Because listen, you look and sound different when God has a hold of you. How do I know that? Because I see Peter. I see James, John. I see the women in the Bible. I see them before and I see them after. God's got a hold of them. When God has a hold of them, they're chatty. They're talking, they're praising, they're bold. The righteous are bold as a lion. But a church that's not bold, a church that is not progressive, a church that is, is not, is a church that's not in the hand of God. Are they saved? Yeah, going to heaven, sure. But they're not apprehended. Paul said, I let God, I, what did he open with? He said, I'm following Jesus so I can apprehend what God apprehended me for. So modern Christians are taught to come to receive from God, but the word says we must first come to give ourselves to God. Remember Jesus said, is there any laboring and heavy laden? Come and I'll give you rest. And so the modern church has taught, just come to church, come to Jesus, and the Lord will give you rest. But coming to church isn't coming to Jesus. And coming to church and, and singing a few songs in the service and, and enduring a message is not being apprehended by God. Right. Praise the Lord. It's not being apprehended by God. So we, we think that we are told to come <clears throat> and uh, we'll find rest. But listen carefully to what Jesus said. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, Take my yoke upon you. What happens when you take Jesus' yoke? You're apprehended. You're with him. You're with him. Are, are you in the yoke with Jesus right now? Right now. You say, well, I wasn't a few minutes ago, but I'm getting there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm starting to get there. That's good because that's one of the ways you can get apprehended. You start hearing the word preached and it starts pulling on your heart. You can sit there like a wart on a pickle. And just simply go, okay, well, I believe that, or oh, yeah, I see that. You're not responding. Sitting with an open mind, listening to someone talk is not responding. Right. Responding is responding. <laughs> are you listening? Yes. That's why, you know, you ever notice I'm always saying, are you listening, are you listening? I'm sure you must want to take your shoe off and throw it at me. So would you shut up? We're listening. <laughs> if you were listening, you'd be talking back. If you were listening, we'd be hearing some amens. If you were listening, every once in a while in the message, you couldn't stay seated. You'd jump to your feet and go, come on, preacher. 
That's true. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Something in you would respond. Thank you, Jesus. Listening is not responding. Jesus called us to take his yoke and follow him, not to think about him, not to accept him in our mind or heart and then just sit there. Am I getting through to anybody? Is anybody listening, getting what I'm saying? Well, I'm so glad uh, this is being recorded because the other half of the church can watch it on the video. Praise the Lord. So Jesus said, take my yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. So the first thing Jesus said before he said, you'll get rest, he said, come to me, take my yoke. Before he said anything about you getting rest, if you don't get in the yoke with him, there's no rest. Amen. He said, come take my yoke, get in the yoke, and you will what? Find rest for your souls. God wants to give, but you've got to find. How come we're not finding? Because we're not getting in the yoke with Jesus. You need to live like an apprehended man. You need to live like an apprehended woman. Praise the Lord. Romans 12 is another verse that just, just absolutely punches up this concept when it says, Present your body a living sacrifice to the Lord, which is your reasonable form of worship. And then you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind and experience the will of God. You see, God wants you to experience his will. He doesn't just want you to read about it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be delivered. He wants you to to experience higher levels of freedom. He wants you to advance through your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But in order to do that, praise the Lord, you must present your body. I like that he said present your body a living sacrifice because we can get so ethereal in our thinking, we think, well, if I present my mind. No, he said body. You live in your body. You are a physical being. God is saying, I want you to stand up. I want you to clap your hands. I want you to fall on your face. I want you to kneel when you pray. I want you to run when you walk. Are you listening to me? I don't want you to just stagger, stumble, or be drawn along in life. I want you to walk as though I am the authority in you and you're taking deliberate steps of authority, calculated, deliberate, forceful, bold steps. That's a child of God. That's a Christian. Hallelujah. You're not going to get this if you keep living a passive life. You did not get saved to have a passive relationship with Jesus. You notice that every step towards Calvary's cross, Jesus became more intense. And when he rose from the dead, he sent what? The Holy Ghost and fire. He didn't send a lozenge. He didn't send a, a, you know, a throat lozenge. He didn't send from heaven on the day of Pentecost a jar of tums or Alka-Seltzer, or some soothing ointment. He sent fire. Holy Ghost fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What do we need today? We don't need no lozenges. We don't need no antacids. We need Holy Ghost fire. That's where God's moving. Holy Ghost fire. Hallelujah. And if you want Holy Ghost fire... If you want that anointing, if you want that fire, what do you have to do? Present your body a living sacrifice. Don't ever come through the church doors again and sit there like a wart on a pickle because you're not presenting yourself to God. Now, quite frankly, I, I was going to say, now it doesn't mean you have to get up and run around, but I wouldn't mind that. I, I'd rather have to calm you all down and say, whoa, whoa, just calm down, calm down. We're, we've got to do something else now. I, I, I'd like to try that, honestly, for a while. That would not be a bad change. It would be great. Hallelujah. So, present your body a living sacrifice. Whew. Hallelujah. That word present, I'm not going to get theological on you, but I just want to bring this up one more time. When, when Paul said present yourself, present your body, present yourself, the word present, is, it's a powerful word that he used when he wrote that. It means to stand beside, 
to exhibit, to substantiate. Now, think about this. Let's say you haven't had the best week. And let's say your performance, quote unquote, as a, as a believer, as an overcomer, has been, well, I've, I've probably lost a few more battles than I've won this week. So you come into church and you're not feeling on top of your game. Don't ever let that stop you from presenting your body a living sacrifice. Don't come through the church with your heart in your hand and broken up over your failures that week. It's fine to come like that. You, you, you don't want to fake or hide it. But when you come, you're coming to Jesus who heals you. Jesus who forgives you. Jesus who puts you back together again. He says, present yourself. I know what you did this week. I know the failures that you've had. I know that you fell short. What did Jesus say to Peter when Peter said, Lord, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. He threw his arm up around Peter's neck. He said, oh, come on. He said, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Forget about it. Hallelujah. Jesus does that. Glory to God. Peter learned. You run with Jesus, not when you're doing great. You just run with him all the time. He'll help you. Hallelujah. He'll get you there. When, when you present yourself, you're, you're coming and you're, imagine you are two. You're you and you, the one that's being presented, and you the presenter. You're bringing your life, whatever it is, mess and all. Bring it to the altar and present it and stand by it. Say, I, how can I stand by it? I, I became angry. I lied. I stole. I had a experience a lustful uh, encounter, I did something wrong. Um, how can I present myself? You do it because Jesus' righteousness is greater than your sin. And if you don't present yourself, God can't do anything about it. If you do present yourself, He can get glory out of your failures. Now, I'm not saying, just like Paul wasn't saying, fail so that God can get glory. But just like John wrote in 1 John, he says, if you say you don't have sin, you're a liar. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So when you come in, you are coming to present yourself. So when you present yourself, you are standing beside yourself and you are exhibiting. Now you think, oh, I don't want to exhibit my flesh. I'm so in the flesh. I yelled at my wife on the way to church and blah, 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 blah. That's not what I want to exhibit. The other word was substantiate. You are coming before God and you are substantiating the transforming power of the new creation and of the blood of Jesus. You're saying, Father, forgive me. I take my forgiveness. I am presenting myself because you are worthy, not because I am worthy. I'm presenting myself because you have lifted me up. I can't lift myself up. I'm presenting myself because you've called me to do so. So I am substantiating the claims of God's word. Here I am, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what. You will leave church leaping and walking, heel clicking, praising God. Where did all that heaviness go that you drug into church? Into the sea of forgetfulness where it belongs. And who left that church? An overcomer. Hallelujah, an overcomer. Apprehended people will apprehend. The world needs some people that are apprehended every day of their life in the hands of God. Be an apprehended Christian. Hallelujah. Graduate from being a churchgoer. If you, if you start with being apprehended, you'll, you'll end up apprehending. Praise God. God wants you in his hands so that you can handle his blessings. God wants you in his hands. You cannot apprehend. You cannot handle his blessing till you put yourself in his hands. The whole purpose, if you do nothing else in the service, ought to be, I need to get myself in God's hands. When you come in here, if it's necessary, you ought to fall on, come up down front and fall on your face. I don't remember the last time, I think the last time I saw somebody actually fall on their face was Bobby Schubert a number of years ago. That is a pitiful shame. That we are a church that believes in the power of the Holy Ghost. We don't even kneel when we pray. We don't fall on our face. 
We don't cry out to God. We don't do any of the things that are characteristic of a spirit-filled church. You think, oh, pastor, you've left preaching and now you're meddling. You know, sometimes a surgeon needs to meddle. You've got to dig down and get underneath where the problem is. You've got to get that foreign matter out. You've got to excise that infection to get the medicine in there where it belongs. I want to get the medicine where it belongs. Are you listening to me? Why don't we kneel anymore? When we, why don't we get on our knees when we pray? Do you know what kneeling is? Do you know why they knelt in the Bible? They gathered to pray. Paul had the Ephesian elders and they saw him as he was leaving and he had said to them, I don't think I'll be seeing you after this. They walked out on the docks. The Bible says Paul got down on his knees and they all got down on their knees out there in public at the docks and they began to pray. Why did they get on their knees? Because it is a physical gesture. It is responding to God. We are so self-oriented. In our culture today, we are so, everything is about us. Everything's about our comfort. Everything is about what's casual for me. Everything's about how we like it. We don't budge. We don't budge to express to God the true worship that he is worthy of. We can't even kneel when we pray. We come in to seek God during prayer time. You can't even tell if anyone's praying. Are you listening? I guarantee you when the believers gathered to pray, you could tell who was praying. It's fine, it's okay to be quiet, but why has being quiet and unobservable become the standard for the church? When Jesus said, let your light shine, you are called to show forth, show forth. When are we going to start showing forth? You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, so that you can show forth. Where's the showing forth? That's the pastor's job. He shows forth, and we get to, I give it a seven. Had some rhythm. That was a bomb. That was a three. That was a dud. It's a dog and pony show. Are you listening? It's a dog and pony show. And we call it church. You know, we don't like people to see us the way we really are, but then why'd you get saved? Why did you come to Jesus? Because Jesus airs laundry. He doesn't tell the bad things about you, but he wants you to open up. I love it when we're praising God because I can always see out of the corner of my eye there's one person who's jumping up and down, who's hopping around, who's cutting a little step, and she has the responsibility to sing, so she's got a microphone, but she doesn't let it stop her. I watch out of the corner of my eye, and there's Aubrey, hopping up and down, slapping her thighs with her hands, raising her hands up in the air, and praising God. I get so encouraged. I think, why doesn't the whole church do that? You're probably sitting there thinking, are you, do you see us? Do you see how old we are? That's probably why you can't do it. Because you haven't moved in seven years. I think it's about time to get some Jesus size back into our praise and worship. Can you say amen? amen? I said we need to get some Jesus size back into praise and worship. You say, I'll feel foolish. You feel a whole lot more foolish without the blessing. Feel foolish, at least you get to take the blessing home with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, I, you can turn your Bibles off of whatever it is that you're going to do. Um, we, we need to act yeah. on this right now. We need to act. We need to respond right now. So if you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know what, I need to, to let God apprehend me. I have needs. There are needs at home waiting for me. I've got some sick children and grandchildren. I got some financial burdens. I got some problems. I've, I have some difficulties that I don't know which way to go. I need wisdom. God knows you need wisdom. Do you know in James chapter 1 it says, if you need wisdom, ask God and he won't criticize you for asking. That's literally what that means when you read, he upbraids not. Let him ask in faith, 
Nothing wavering. Ask and he will not upbraid. In other words, he will not criticize you and say, well, dummy, what are you asking for? That's so plain. Just do this. God is never like that towards us. He just says, child, I, let me show you how to do this. So that may be a need that you have. There's needs. You have a need for wisdom when you get home. Hallelujah. Get apprehended right now. Get apprehended this morning. Say within your heart, however many 20 more minutes or however 30 minutes more this service goes, whatever, I'm going to get apprehended before I leave. I'm going to receive by faith. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to praise God. I want Jesus to know that there's going to be a change in my house starting today. There's going to be a change in me starting today. The pastor beat me up. He hurt me. And I'm going to come back and get even with him next week. I'm going to come back next week. I'm going to show him. Do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many people do you think God has to set on fire to set the city of Clearwater on fire? How many brands, fire brands, do you think God has to create to burn up Pinellas County? How many? How many did he use to take down the Roman Empire? Eleven. They quickly multiplied. You see, when you let God set you on fire, hallelujah, look out. You're just going to multiply. Praise the Lord. I want you to stand with me. And look, if you want God to apprehend you, and you just want to express that to the Lord, I want you to just come down here. Just come down to the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.